Chair. Right, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so the next item on the agenda is the minutes, but before we move on to that, um, we, I want to take a couple of minutes to review our procedures for making changes to the minutes. And I'm going to pass out uh, my uh, take on our procedures, and let's kind of go through them and make sure we're all on board for there. Excuse me, President Spadoni, is yes. that what you emailed us? Essentially, yes. Okay, good. I got and it. I, but I, I kind of changed it. Uh, oh dear, I didn't make enough copies. That's right. So it's mine. Okay. Uh, I want definitely you and uh, Sue to have the the perfect of it. And then I guess I've got one to just oh, pass great. over here. Yeah, this is, yeah. So, um, and I and I, you know, I'm not really happy about the way things have been going lately. So. Maybe if we can uh, codify it a bit and on our procedures. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sasha. But I saved fifteen thousand fifty-six water bottles. But they don't. It's in this folder. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, as usual. Oh, I do have it. Does everybody have a copy? Yes. But I passed up. Good. Okay. So obviously, we're, we, we have the president calls for a motion to approve the minutes. Another trustee seconds the motion. If there's no second, the minutes can't be approved. That we never get this. So. Mm -hmm. uh, but once the motion okay. is seconded, the trustees can make further motions to add, remove, or modify the text. Mm -hmm. So then, each time we modify the text, we should really say, "I move to modify the text on page blah blah blah, paragraph blah blah blah." It should be this. Or I move to add the words, or I move to remove the words. Really, there's, I think that's it. Modify, add, or remove should be all that we do. Sometimes there's spelling errors. Okay, so uh, that's a regular modification. Yeah, and let's. I'll address that in a minute too. Um, but after a trustee uh, moves to modify the minutes, another trustee seconds the motion. So really, it's not the the trustee that seconded the original motion can now make the deciding factor. It's a, it's a new motion. We need to have a new trustee second that, that motion. It's a new motion, okay. not the original one. Okay, so let's be clear on There's that. There's a new motion every time there's the change. Absolutely, trustees. it's okay. a new motion. And a new trustee to modify. And Correct. They can't be the same one? Can't be the same motion. It can be they the can't trustee. be the same trustee? trustee? Sure, okay. it can be the same, I'm sorry, it's a, yes. Whatever trustee wants to make a change, they move. Uh, to make a motion, they, they make their change, another trustee seconds it. Okay. To be the same people, it doesn't really matter. Yes? So does that negate the original? I'm getting to there. Sorry. Well, people are spoiled. <laughs> Ask them great questions. Go. Okay, so if no trustee seconds the motion, then no action can be taken on that motion, right? If a trustee seconds the motion, the change can be discussed and or further modified. Great. Then the board will vote on that motion to modify the text. And then we just keep doing that until all the modifications are submitted. And then if we've had a change to the minutes, the original motion is moved. It no longer exists because we made a motion to accept the minutes as they were written. So now a new motion will be made to approve the minutes as modified. The motion will be seconded and voted. And I think if we follow that procedure, it'll be fair for everyone It'll be standardized, and we should not have uh, all the consternation we have. <coughs> so, if somebody makes motions, uh -huh. whether it's first or second, yes, they can't say no. They just what? We're, we're motioning for the discussion, and it's up to the board <coughs> to decide what it is. Yes. Okay. Cool. Thank yes. you for clarifying that. Yes. Yes. So, if a motion is made to approve the minutes as is, as written, as presented to us, and seconded, do we vote on it right then, up or down? No. We ask if there are any changes. 
because if we voted on it up and down, then we would preclude any changes. And what if someone makes some suggestions for changes, but neither the movement or the secondary agrees with those changes? Of the original motion, doesn't matter. That's, that's where we were wrong, in my opinion. The original mover and seconder of the original motion has no bearing on the modifications moving forward because it is a new motion. A new motion has been made to change the text for ABC to XYZ. That motion has been seconded it. The board votes on it. We decide. So if it isn't seconded, it's dropped. If, if it's not seconded, it's dropped. Yes? I understand the process that you're implementing, but I have a question. Sure. In the beginning, when you normally would ask um, to approve the minutes, yes. wouldn't responding yes to that just open it up for discussion? Uh, so usually I say, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes of the regular board meeting done? There's a, somebody says yes, somebody mm -hmm. seconds it. Okay. Now we say, are there any changes? Okay, so we are going to yes and second Correct. because we have to open it up. Yes. I got it. Okay, yep, fine. That's how we, we have it. to open up. That we have to, Thank right. You. Yes, right. right. Now, as far as minor spelling corrections, I really want to encourage everybody, when they get the minutes, they see something that's that's minor like that, to give Diana uh, an email, and Susan, Susan, Diana an email to correct those. I, I don't think we should be making motions and second and all that jazz just, just for spelling or typos or something of that nature. Okay. Right? I need, I need. Mm -hmm. Yes, I need affirmation. I need, I need, I need affirmation. As Diane. As Diane. <laughs> <laughs> does that make you feel better? It does, much better. I'm so good. Okay. okay, are we clear? Any questions? Thank you, no questions. I do. <laughs> I don't know how this is going to work, but... Yeah. Okay, well, we'll find out. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. We're going to find out. All right, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes of the regular board meeting of December 18th, 2019? So, so we'll second. Second, great. Are there any changes? Yes. Okay, so this is a motion. You're calling she will, a motion. Yes, Carolyn will say, I move... Yeah. To Technical change, blah blah blah. The she is making motion. the first motion. Cool. Thank you. Yes. I motion. I motion to remove line four. Line four of what? On page? page three, starting with, she was wasting her time and the attorney's time because I didn't say that. Okay. That's concerned that she was wasting time. On page three? Yeah. So you wanted to read and express concern asking questions? What, what do you want it to read? Well, actually, I don't know if you want me to remove that and then ask to modify it, or should I just modify it first? Modify it. Okay, so I'd like to modify it by replacing that with... She was using taxpayer dollars for her time and attorney's fees to search for objections. Okay. I second the motion. Now, do we have any discussion on this? I just need a repeat of what's going to be changed. Specifically, we're going to remove. Line four on page three, the ending, she was wasting her time and the attorney's time. And you are replacing it with? She was using taxpayer dollars for her time and attorney fees to search for objections. <clears throat> so you're actually removing she was wasting her time and the attorney's time asking all the way to the period, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. <coughs> You're welcome. Okay. That she was using her lawyer, that she was using taxpayer dollars for her time and attorney fees to search for objections.
I have no issue with that. Actually, I remember that's pretty much how you said it. Thank you. Anybody else? Going once, going twice. Now we have to vote, right? Now we vote. But vote on what? There are still challenges. Her move and her motion to make this change. Just to make the change? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I have one. So wait, wait, wait. What about my motion, the first motion? That is now moot. And at the end, we are going to have a new motion to accept the minutes as modified. And we already did the discussion. Did After what we just did. That's well, part of the discussion. Yeah. May I continue? I just Absolutely. One other? All right, this is the last line on page six. This is the motion. Um, oh, wait a minute. No, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Page three, line number six. So it's right, it's two lines below what we just talked about. I'm, I motion to include after elected official, and they could also be objections. So the full sentence would read, Mr. Euler explained that all of the questions asked were excellent given the director's role as local election official, and they could also be objections. I second the move. So far it's going well. <laughs> Your opinion. <laughs> wow. Tough crowd. <laughs> All right. And uh, my opinion on this one, so I'll start to go around. Um, uh, I, I don't like this particular change, so I'll say no. Anybody else want to mention and say what they want? Uh, no. I don't think change is appropriate. Maybe no. you can just have the vote then. Nobody else. Yeah, I, I look at it as a negative connotation. Yeah. Voting? Voting. Okay. Uh, Karen? No. Carolyn? Yes. Diane? No. Gaddy? No. Linda? No. Tim? No. Sue? I abstain. Right. One yes, one no. All right. Now I have my own. Ah. Which is on the second page of the sheet I sent guys somewhere on. Huh? It's uh, the page thing page. that I sent out. Has it stapled? Yeah, this. Uh, yeah, it's on the next page. All right, so I move the following changes under the other title on the bottom of page five. <clears throat> uh, that the following text be added to consideration of digital board patents. Dash, the board decided not to pursue the use of digital board patents. Following text be added to procedure for agenda items. The board reviewed the procedures for adding items to the board agenda. And uh, following text added to treats for staff. The board discussed providing treats for the staff during the upcoming all-staff retreat day. Mm -hmm. Do 
I hear a second? Second. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Any discussion on this one? <laughs> if not, I will call for the vote. Cindy. Aaron. Oh, yes. Carolyn. Yes. Diane. Yes. Patty. Yes. Linda. Yes. Kim. Yes. Sue will be. Abstain. All right. And is everybody done with all the changes to the minutes? Yes. yes. All right. Great. Now, do I hear a motion to approve? the amended minutes of the regular board meeting of December 18, 2019. Motion. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Second. second. Linda. Great. Can I call for the vote? Sure. We have to wait Karen Diamond? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Stu? Stay. Yes. Okie okay, doke. Very good. Thank you so much. Uh, has anyone registered for public comment? <clears throat> According to our public comment policy, excuse me, each speaker has five minutes to speak and no more than a total of 30 minutes of public comment total. Uh, I remind our visitors that this is an opportunity for public comment, not a question and answer session, nor an open debate. If anyone has any specific questions, please contact our executive director during normal library hours and she will coordinate providing the answers to you. Uh, trustees and library administration may provide short explanations, clarifications, and or corrections upon their discretion, but they are not obligated to do so. Our first speaker is Dave Carabona. Oh, Dave. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you? Dave Carabona, Niles, Illinois. Uh, very quickly, it was, it was very good to see how you just handled your meeting minutes and the amendments. It's a fantastic way to handle it. Um, capital fund accounts. Capital fund accounts have pros and cons. The first is the pros. Capital fund account is if you have information that's verifiable based on an expert that tells you you're going to need a roof in a year. You're going to need plumbing work within two years. Or to have a certain amount of cash set aside for an emergency. That's what a capital fund account is for. However, there are governmental bodies that have historically abused capital fund accounts by taking significant sums of money, opening a capital fund account, and putting money that money into that capital fund account because it takes it off the table when it comes to levying and budgeting and looking how much you have in quote-unquote savings. It's off to the side and it's not considered. It was my understanding, right or wrong, it was my understanding that the board is considering putting transferring $5.2 million of taxpayer funds into a capital fund account. All that I have seen, all that I have reviewed, there is zero justification for that when it comes to funding this capital fund account in that regard. Now, also, you transfer that $5.2 million in the capital fund account that's not subject to a wish list. Gee, I'd like to have this, I'd like to have that, I'd like to have cookie trays and this kind of thing. No, this has to be specifically designated necessary spending for necessary repairs that come up that cannot be budgeted for, kind of a, maybe a surprise or a significant expense. Things like cookie trays and that kind of thing, these other expenses that, we, that I've been hearing about, I've been reading about, I've been viewing, uh, these wish lists have to be included in your regular budget so that people see what's happening with those funds. Also, when you have $5.2 million tied up in a capital fund, 
That's taxpayer money that's not, that's $5.2 million, not in the pockets of the taxpayers. That's their money. They should be able to go out and spend that money, not the library, especially with the study that came up with the roof. The roof is fine, the structure's fine. All's well, and we, I believe we tossed a million dollars toward the roof anyway. That $5.2 million taken out of the local economy could be $25 million of business transactions, transferring those funds back and forth in the, our local Niles community. So what I'm saying is capital fund accounts are not to be used. I'm not that saying that this is what your purpose is. It's not to be used to hide or to, set a, to simply take funds off the table. And it has to be for specific purposes and specific need. If the need isn't there, you don't tax for it if you don't need the money. And if the need isn't there, you don't capital fund it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No one else signed up for public comment? Okay. Uh, next we have the trustees' reports. We'll begin with the president's report, and then if anyone else wants to make a report, they can. And again, uh, this is just a, an opportunity for trustees to uh, talk about their past uh, year, month's experience with the library. Uh, I, I attended, myself, I attended the uh, Shakespeare presentation of Richard III last Friday. And again, um, an outstanding presentation. Those people just do a marvelous job. If anybody has not attended one of those, it is a reading where they uh, they have the, the script in front of them, but um, very often the principles are mostly memorized, and it's it's it's, um, it's a quality performance uh, that the library provides. Uh, anybody else have anything they'd like to share? Sure. Um, yes, we invited uh, all of our legislators to come to the uh, public mm -hmm. library. Absolutely. Uh, it was uh, just this past Saturday. Uh, we, unfortunately, we only had one come this past Saturday, and that would be Senator Ron Philip Philip Um I would say his name wrong. Um, and he was uh, just very cordial, very interested mm -hmm. in our library. Spent some time walking around, taking a tour of it, and uh, telling us about uh, his district and. Uh, concerns that he hears from people. So that was, it was very, very nice to make a connection with him and to tell him what some of the concerns of the library were. So I was glad he came to visit us. Great. No more? I was at a couple of uh, workshops. I was at uh, today, uh, Rain Dish, a monogram to Rain Dish, um, crochet a stone, yeah. a round of stone, not yeah. crochet a stone. And um, also the uh, Nippets, which is a knitting and crocheting club. Um, and I was at the thing with the senator. The thing with, um, I found out with the, some of the crocheting things is people are misunderstanding and they're coming with absolutely no knowledge of what crocheting really is. And so it's like it's a beginner class and we get had class at the stone on there were two people that had no knowledge whatsoever. And that was interesting. Um, so I don't know. Other than that, uh, it's nice. Great. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the Treasurer Report. Uh, Treasurer's Report, Patty. <coughs> December is the sixth month of the fiscal year and 50% of our way through the budget. The library overall expenditures are under budget at 37% of the budget. On page eight, revenues. Total revenues are 48% of the budget. Property taxes, 47% of the budget. Fines, 55% of the budget. Replacement tax, 55% of the budget. Investment income, 92% of budget. Passport income, 53% budget. Salaries are slightly lower than budget at 48%. On page 9, library materials are at 55% of budget. Library operation expenditures at 38%. The overall category is just a little under budget. Page 10, general administration is at 42% of 
overall category is just a little under budget, page 11. Employee fringe benefits under budget at 45%. Utilities a little under budget at 47%. Capital expenditures under budget at 3%. And page 12, building and equipment materials under budget at 36%. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any comments on the trustee uh, financial report? No? Thank you. <clears throat> okay, I will now entertain a motion to approve the payment of bills for operating expenses of $179,099.27. Payroll expenses of $285,538.32. Special reserve expenses of $28,960.84. For a total monthly expense of $493,862.56. Do I hear a motion? Daddy? Second? Second. Great. Sue. So, very good. Do we have any uh, discussion on these items? Mm -hmm. Karen? No. Anything? Patty? No. Diane? No. no. Linda? No. Carolyn? Uh, no. No. Sue? No. Or Lady Mackerel? Okay. Uh, Cindy, please take the roll. Um, Karen Diamond? Yes. Car Carolyn? No. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Sue? Yes. Great. The next item on the agenda is the director's report. Uh, Susan. All right. I thought you might like to hear what we have planned for our staff day coming up on <coughs> Friday. Um, under state law now, we have to train up the entire staff on anti-harassment. Um, policies and so we have a presentation on that where we first are going to view a video on it and then we have a workshop speaker coming in uh, to talk about bias interruption so the idea that um, one patron say might be harassing another patron and how do we intervene in that situation and kind of coming up with all sorts of different situations where you might need to be intervening uh, I think that should be very interesting uh, don't tell the staff, but we'll be having a tornado drill. We, um, we always have some safety drill during that day. We um, also always rehearse our Code Adam techniques. That's where if a child has gone missing, everybody has to hit the floor looking for the child. So uh, we'll be doing that again. Uh, we'll have breakout sessions in the afternoon where one of them is going to be on using Google Translate to work with patrons that speak other languages. Um, and so there are two sets of the breakout sessions, so you go to one and then you, you have your choice of between four. So it's the Google Translate, it's behind the scenes tours of admin and outreach. I polled the staff to see what departments they wanted to see, why they want to see admin. I could not tell you. It will be, you know, me saying, well, I talk on the phone, and I meet with people, but we'll, we will give them, we will do our best to give them a lovely tour. So admin and outreach behind the scenes. There uh, will be a workshop on de-escalation techniques, how you, have, you might be in a heated situation with a patron and how to lower that temperature. Arian Perry is doing that one. Um, there will be skits for that. And uh, then somebody is coming in presenting on mindfulness. So they get to pick one from the first set and one from the second set. Are you, are you taping, videotaping any of that sort of thing? <laughs> I want to feel completely. I'd like to see the DS coming. Who's your mindfulness? What's that? Who's your mindfulness speaker? I do not remember the name. Uh, let's see. We um, okay. And the other thing I just wanted to mention is that last month, Mr. Dowdy had brought up our staff copier purchase and had criticized our way of going about it. Felt that we don't know enough about our purchases before we make them. So he took it upon himself to call our surrounding libraries and find out if they lease or purchase their staff copiers. And gave the information at that time that they all purchased their copiers. And I'm sure there was just some confusion on the phone because some, you know, they might not have realized that we were talking about staff copiers, not patron copiers, or, or something. But the information that he brought to the board was not correct. And I just wanted to say that in the context of 
My staff is extremely knowledgeable. They do a great deal of research before they bring anything like that to the board. And I, I, people, you know, Rich Wojniska is who other libraries are calling for information. It's not that Rich needs to be calling, though he does communicate with all the other people. But he's the knowledgeable person. So I just want to say, you know, the assumption that we go about making big purchases without our due diligence is pretty insulting, and we just don't do that. Um, let's see, that is all I have. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, well, you, we are going to start talking about our strategic plan at some point soon. Right? Yes, I actually spoke with a consultant about it this morning. So can you say a little bit about what's happening Sunday with all the area? Yeah, so it turned into this big thing. We put, have this, had this um, exhibit in the gallery here of all the photographs of this particular celebration. Yeah, really lovely. And they wanted, it was initially just going to be a little sort of party thing, and it just developed into this whole big um, dance program with music, and the uh, Consul General of the Bulgarian Embassy in Chicago will be coming to speak. Is so, uh, I don't really know how it all unfolded. I, I think I don't know, honestly. It's uh, but yeah, yeah, we didn't we didn't reach out to them. I think the Bulgarian people reached out to, to them. Isn't there um, supposed to be a little movie or something too? I, there could be. Um, yeah, yeah, Dave says yes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's it's going to be neat. Two o'clock Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, that should be a wonderful afternoon. And uh, we're kind of using it part of it as our kickoff to coming together, which is starts, you know, the grand opening to that is the following Sunday over at Niles West. And that's the cultural celebration that we did publish last year. This year is a kind of a look back over the last 10 years of that program, um, and it's just called Journeys to Niles Township. It's all the different ways that people arrived here from wherever they came from. Cool. Yeah, it should be very cool. Bernadette, that I find that uh, fascinating. Yeah. I just find it fascinating somebody could be born in India and show up in Niles. <laughs> 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 Choose Niles. Any point for It's our library. It's the library. <sighs> Very good. Any other uh, comments? On the... I have a few questions. Sure. Um, under um, our capital asset policy implementation, um, uh, we'll page you on there, Carol. Page 25, the bottom. Under business office, um, it says here that you're interviewing asset control solution firms to perform a physical inventory and tagging process, which was um, recommended by our auditors. And I was uh, wondering um, why we're seeking someone from the outside to do that for us, mm -hmm. as opposed to having it done by library staff. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a big job, first of all. Uh, second of all, um, they come with a um, with a system that includes, you know, tags and software and change forms and things of that nature. Uh, so that once it's established, it's uh, easy to maintain, easier to maintain uh, going forward. Uh, in the past, uh, before I was hired, we actually had another person. <coughs> sitting in, uh, in the business office coordinator's office, they shared office space, whose, uh, my understanding is their sole job was to track assets and, and so forth, and uh, somehow uh, that person was either redeployed to other tasks or, um, or retired or was let go or something, but we certainly don't have that person now. So we have to catch up. Well, I realize, um, I think according to the auditors, we have not tracked items since 2013. I'm not sure how large of a task it is, considering the library is not that huge. Um, I, I am concerned that we don't utilize our staff. We have over 100 employees now, almost double what we had when, when you first started. And I know huge corporations use their staff for inventory processes. Um, once again, if we had a facilities committee, which consisted of staff and knowledgeable residents who are professionals in this field, they could have definitely helped us 
prepare and plan how to do this on our own with all the employees we have, all the departments. There definitely are methods. And as we all know, we probably have the best technology on the North Shore. We certainly could, like other companies, create our own inventory process for tagging and identification. Um, obviously, we did it when that one employee was here, probably before we were anywhere near as computerized as we are. Um, I'm sort of alarmed because every time we need to do something, we're hiring somebody from the outside, or we need to bring in another consultant. Um, and I'm concerned about the fact that if we're increasing staff, and a lot of our staff are, you know, maintain a master's in library science, I think we should try to utilize our staff as opposed to continuously seeking out ways to spend money on the outside. And inventory tagging and um, processing is, is not an abomination. It's a, almost a very simple task, and it's done everywhere. Again, if we had a committee with residents who are already professional and knowledgeable, it might not be as alarming to us to do something like this. I mean, I'm looking around this board table, and, and I see a lot of people seem shocked by the fact that I would even mention that. But if you've worked with asset management, if you've done this, it's not that complicated. So I would just like to see if we could come up with some ways we ourselves can handle the tasks at hand without seeking outside sources, hiring this particular company or hiring um, endless consultants. Okay, well, let me just address a couple of the misstatements there. It was in uh, 1998 that we had the person that was working in this office, and that was in the course of the last major, major renovation, so that every single piece of furniture, every, every single thing was tagged and listed, and eventually they just decided that position was no longer necessary. Mm -hmm. um, many of our things are... Our assets are controlled, certainly we know about every book and things like that. The other misstatement I wanted to make is we absolutely not have not doubled the staff since Greg started six years ago. We have not increased the staff um, very much. Actually. Yeah, we mostly are going down, so I have no idea where you have that idea. And last of all, I don't believe the auditor said we haven't done any inventory since 2013. I don't know where that statement came from. So anyway, uh, you know, this will be up to the board whether we hire a company to do it. One of the other things in the policy was about um, get valuing the property of the library as well. That was another part of this. So you know, it's, it's we can do what the board wants us to do. It's absolutely up to you. But we, uh, but I don't. My staff is all working hard. There, I, I could potentially redeploy some, re redeploy someone, but then I'd be taking them away from doing something else that they're already doing. They're not sitting around twiddling their thumbs. So anyway, I, I have to bristle a little bit at some of the things that we just said. And our, most of our employees part-time rather than full-time. Yes. Part -time. That's one thing. And also, I don't know well, what makes you think that it's such a simple job. Because I've done it. It is. So have I. And it's a, it depends on so many factors, but Absolutely. I don't think this library is a small job to keep in We have an entire year before we Excuse are me. we are expected Excuse to complete me, it. As you say, I think the, you don't realize the time involved. There is time involved by the um, <coughs> employees before before the inventory even starts. They have to gather their information. I, I'm well aware. They have jobs already. Why do you think they're working? Every day they're working. They have their specific job description. And I don't see the reason for um, keeping it involved. Just with staff. We need an outside company who can organize it and do it well. My question is this. Is this something that um, is supposed to go happen every year as far as this inventory keeping it up to date? I believe the idea would be that you have a baseline and then yeah. you maintain it. So basically you're asking this company to come in is to give us a baseline and then work from there with our staff. Okay, thank you. Okay. I was just going to say I've done inventory in the past, but I was hired 
by another company who didn't usually have enough people to do it. So I and other people were hired to come in and do the inventory. And they didn't pay us that much, frankly. And uh, I think probably people with masters of library science and other degrees, their time is better spent doing their regular jobs than doing inventory. It's not only um, the time that even um, at our school, we do not do it during school hours or doing it's always something additional, um, if need be, and it's very laborious. There, you have to be in perfect physical shape. Um, everything is very heavy and very um, hard on your neck, hard on your back. And are you willing to take that risk? It's very risky to have your employees be doing that type of laborious work. Um, and I have a very small library, and it took us over three weeks to do our very small library. So this is much larger. So I'm all for hiring someone. Well, we're not deciding that. No, we're not. not but I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, just saying, <coughs> so I, you, putting you it are. on the staff is, I think, honestly impossible. So. You, you will be coming to us with a yeah. This is just a right, preliminary response right. to what we've been brought up last month. Yeah, so please Thank we you. can uh, discuss it at that point. Okay, and then um, on page thirty-one. Oh, sorry. Um, no, it's page thirty-three. Um, under building notes, um, we've been working with our independent roof consultant to develop specifications for the roof replacement project. Is I take it this independent roof consultant is Tony Whittington, the one you just introduced last month? Yeah, that's correct. What, what does this mean he's um, developing specification for the replacement project? Um. Uh, the board last month uh, instructed us to uh, go ahead and create a, um, an RFP uh, using Mr. Whittington and uh, his expertise. Um, and then um, just another thing, I tried to find Tony Whittington. I understand you said he's in Madison, but I couldn't locate him. Do you have a business card or something or something? Letterhead that identifies him. I don't. Um, could you provide me with that? I don't. Well, my concern is um, we just had this roofing information provided to us by Frederick Quinn, who has been with, who has been reviewing our property since I believe the renovation, and I'm trying to figure out why we decided that, or it appears that we've decided Frederick Quinn was not competent to provide us with that roofing information. So we, we moved to Tony Whittington. And I'd like to know a little bit more about him. But I think we discussed this last week. Well, again, I can't locate him. I don't know what he is or where he's from. I just, I'm asking for at least a business card. Because again, Fred Wick Quinn already told us about the roof. Well, this was an independent. Well, everyone's independent, aren't they? They're, we don't. Not necessarily. We pay them. I don't think we even paid Quinn, but we paid this man three thousand. So it's a little give and take. Um. But I'd like to find out more about him. Greg, maybe you can provide next thing you can provide. Um, does something? he have a background? Uh, like like a CV? So yes, something. Well, I mean, does the man have a business? <clears throat> Excuse me, Greg, does this man have a business? I'm sorry? Does this man have a business? Yes. Okay, well, I can't locate that. Can you just give me his business name and address? That's all I need. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, and then on page 34, staff copiers. Um, uh, I'm sorry, Carol. Let's go back to that. So, Greg, if you would send an email out to the entire board with his... Um, um, website or his business. Uh, sure. Or Thank you. Sure. Right. And then I had a question about the staff copiers, which we discussed last month. Um, and uh, Rich explained to us that he, um, the bidding process went 
through it's called Wesco Natsco. Um, and that all that information, because it was multiple pages, was on our website. So I went there, and what I was able to locate on our website, oh, it's WSCA NASPO. All right, the um, contract or the bid that's up there, Proposal 3091, is dated June 10th, 2014. So that kind of took me back. So I went through the pages, and I, the last page where you had to sign, it was also signed in 2014. I think you must have been looking at the contract, not at the information on board book for last month's meeting. I was in the board book, and under the agenda items, under the copier, you had all these links. Okay. So these two were there, and then inside this proposal, 3091, for copiers, printers, and related devices, it had three attachments, and I think they were like B, C, and D, and apparently they were pricing. It said double click and you could see the pricing. I couldn't get through them. So what I'd like to ask you for is, you know, my concern last month was we didn't have a group of um, vendors to compare. We only had one bid that um, Rich was interested in going with anyway. It's the same manufacturer that we use now. And he gave us a, um, a table comparing the pricing with Canon. So I really wanted to see who bid on this, on these copiers, that their pricing was so different from the company we selected, but I wasn't able to get them. So can somebody access those um, prices and those um, vendors so I can see that? And why the RFP is dated 2014 is kind of frightening. Although the attachments claim they were created in December of 2019, that was all I was able to get. So there's a bit of confusion, and if I could get those um, attachments, I'd appreciate it. And then if someone could explain why the bid is five years old or six years old. Well, I believe that's a master. Uh, I believe that's a master agreement, and then it's updated with pricing schedules every. Uh, well, how about where are the details regarding? the purchase of the copier we were interested in. I couldn't locate that either. So I'm trying to figure out how this all came about. I thought Rich explained that to us yeah. last He did. Week. He told me it was so many bids and all the pricings on the website. And it's not so there. So you have that information that he gave you, apparently. All, that you're all, basing this on, all, you have that information? I went to the website did to see instructions. Did you have it to show us? Because I remember. Okay, uh, let me let me clarify. I think I, I'm not clear enough. Rich did not discuss the proposal or provide us any information regarding the proposal because it was too many pages. But if we wanted to view it, we could go on the website, which is where I went. All Greg provided us last month was the proposal from the company that we went with. Um, Oh, it escapes me now. That's a photo. I think we all remember that. Mm -hmm. Whoever, Conoco Minolta. Okay, and then all he provided us with was a table that showed Conoco Minolta to purchase was 81000 On the bottom it said Panama Conoco Minolta to lease is 86000 So he said, well, of course, if you want me to spend more money, I'll lease it. And then he also gave us a table that just showed Canon was more expensive on these line items than Conica Minolta. Now, that's not actually a bid process, so I wanted to see the companies that well, were involved. that's because we, ch we, we were using, my understanding is we were using the organization that by their size is getting the best price for those that equipment. And now, you know, that's that would be that would be why right, the right, proposal was there. I'm looking right. for the companies that bid. But we didn't have bids. Yeah, we we didn't bid. We went to this NAPSCO. Right. They did the bidding. Mm -hmm. And if you go online, you can see all the bids that were submitted. Well, I can't find them. Okay, so here's my suggestion. So I'm just asking. Yes, for I understand. That. Here's my suggestion. We can talk about this, but my suggestion is that you meet separately with Rich and to go through this level of detail. Well, you know, can I, I, well, I, I'm not done. Go ahead. I'm not done. 
because I don't know if the rest of the board needs this level of detail. Sure, no problem. This. That's, and you know, that, that's my opinion. We can go around and, and anybody else has a Can I just interject one thing? Instead sure. of meeting with him, I know he's so very busy, I could send him an email and just explain my problem and I maybe think he can just great solution. send that information to me. Susan, are you okay that with that? That's fine. Great. Oh, thank you, thank you. Very nice. Is everybody else okay with that? Sure. Okay, right. then I have another question right below that. Staff intranet refresh project. Could someone explain what our intranet, our staff intranet actually is used for? I wasn't it aware was, of that. Well, it's nothing that the board would be using. It is strictly for staff use. Um, it has links to different things that staff need to access on a regular basis. Diane, for example, has an access table of all of the resumes and applications that are made at the library, and that's a way she can get to that. Technical Services has some files on it, but it's extremely out of date, and nobody but IT can update it. Um, and so um, we are looking to completely revamp it and have it be a much more useful thing. So I have Suzanne so, Wolf and Rich Bush needs to go working on that right now. So a staff intranet, is it a um, location where staff can locate files? Is that what you're It can explaining? be that. It can be um, any information that I want them to have at their fingertips, all at one place, so they can get to things quickly. That's all going to be there, where they can get it quickly and easily, not hold a patron up, wait, looking for this or that. It's to make their jobs easier. So it's not an intranet, but maybe a drive? It's no, have you, you not have experienced an intranet yeah, before? Yeah, but not for something like this. Well, I this is exactly what they're for. Details. More, mine's more detailed than looking for a schedule. Well, so we whatever information the, the administration needs to put on there for their So it's employees. information for the whole library, and we're going to get a, a newer it. system. Is that it? It's not a system that we'll be building. A, I don't know if it will be SharePoint or going through WordPress and developing a website, something like that. It's a, it's not a huge project, but it's just badly needs to be done. Okay, you're it's coming. All right. Day. So you need a new system for sharing. Okay, fine. That sounds good. I, I wasn't even aware we had one. Um, let's see. I think I'm almost done. Actually, that was it for the director's information thank you so much great uh karen anything on this director's report uh no director's report no patty no uh diane no and uh no. oh sue no. great very nice very very nice all right tonight we have a uh, secretary's report diane would you like to read it into the record yes a certified copy of the report of the Statement of Operations for the Niles Main District Library for the 12 months ending June 30, 2019 was filed with the Cook County Clerk on January 2, 2020 with a certificate of publication. The Statement of Operations was published in the Journal Topics and News on December 25, 2019. Okay. Anything on that? Doesn't look like it. All right. I now need a motion to approve the transfer of five million two hundred thirty-two thousand two hundred thirty-five dollars and no cents from the general fund to the special reserve. Uh, yeah, uh, first. I'll move. Move soon. Second. We'll have a second. Great. We'll All right. Second. Um, Linda I believe Linda. Right. So um, uh, we have a memo for this on page 42. Greg and Susan, if you want to walk us through uh, the logic and reasoning in the background of this. President Spadoni. I, yes, yes, Trustee. I would like to motion that we table this approval until the board has reviewed the capital project's request to determine their cost and necessity, along with the capital assets proposal and business case from the administration for each item. Do I hear a second? Sorry, no second. Well, Trustee Spadoni is president. I would hope in our perseverance for transparency and accountability 
that you may want to second this motion. I would like to hear and walk, walk through um, the um, reasonings and what Greg has to say before we table this. Thank you. You're welcome. So um, I, I'll just begin quickly, and then Greg, of course, knows a great deal more about it than I do. But I just want to say that you know every year we have to put together a budget, and um, we have to fund the budget. And so we put together a budget based on the things that we plan to accomplish in the coming year and the costs of those things. And then when the budget is passed, we try our very hardest to not spend that money, to save as much money as possible. And we look for grant money, and we try to be as frugal as possible with taxpayers' dollars. But we can't not budget for those things. We can't not levy for those things. We need to have the money on hand for the things that we are committing to doing. And so at the end of many years, there's usually a certain amount left over. Typically, uh, now we have, have passed a fund balance policy, which suggests X number of dollars be kept in the general fund to cover expenses. So you always want to have some liquid money so that you can cover any unexpected ex expenses and so that you can cover any lag in the tax dollars. And then the remainder of that money is supposed to be transferred into your special reserve fund so that you will be able to afford all of the technology, equipment, and capital projects that are coming up. And the board has received an extensive list of those projects with explanations most recently. So that's just, I just wanted to explain that is why that money exists, is that we budget for the money, we levy for the money, and then we try very hard not to spend the money so that we get the best possible value for everything that we try to do. Right? This would be exciting. Okay. So, uh, as Susan said, we uh, passed a, a fund balance uh, policy in October, I believe. And um, that policy says that we should have at least uh, one half of uh, current year's operations in the uh, general fund fund balance. Our budget for operations is approximately $6 million. I know there's a number out there that's been tossed around at $8.4 million. But the 8.4 million uh, includes uh, 1.9 million dollars in uh, uh, capital projects that we had in the past budget. Uh, also includes about 550 thousand dollars for the special revenue fund. So once you take those numbers out, you're left with about six million dollars uh, that it actually takes to operate the library on a day-to-day -day basis through the general fund. Half of that is three million dollars. When I looked at the uh, general fund balance as of the last audit date, which was June 30th, 2019, uh, that amount is uh, 8 million to 32 and um, uh, if you subtract $3 million, $3 million to leave in the uh, general fund, uh, the difference is uh, 5 million to 32 which is what we're suggesting uh, be moved to the uh, special reserve fund in compliance with the policy. Um, on the expense side, coming out of that fund is about uh, $3.6 million of uh, projects that uh, we've laid out and uh, uh, we have given to the board and we've talked about it a few meetings. Um, uh, that includes the $1.9 million that is budgeted for this year. Uh, we also looked at um, what was a little further down the road um, in terms of uh, you know what capital projects might impact the, uh, the library, the biggest one out there is the um, potential for uh, uh, for the next renovation. Uh, it seems like we're run on a cycle where we're renovating the library uh, every 15 years or 16 years or something like that. Uh, the last renovation uh, was in 2013. Uh, so six years ago, and that cost uh, five and a half million dollars. So if you sum the 3.6 and the five and a half million, you get a number that looks like nine million dollars uh, that, that uh, represents our needs into the future. Uh, one of the things I think the library has done extraordinarily well is uh, taking on large capital projects without having to borrow any money. We have zero debt, on our, zero bond debt on our, uh, on our balance sheet. As a matter of fact, we have zero debt on our balance sheet. Um, 
we don't owe anybody anything. And um, I think that's, uh, that's a great way to operate. I think most libraries would like to operate this way. I think most businesses would like to operate this way. And this, um, so if we make this transfer of uh, $5.2 million and add it to the special reserve uh, <coughs> balance of $1 million, it increases the special reserve to about $6.2 million. And uh, that would be available for the $3.6 million project just that we have as far as a good down payment and a renovation uh, coming up probably in another, well, if this is six years, you know, probably like another nine or ten years. So, and they'll put, you know, they'll put the next generation in a position so they can make the renovation, keep current, keep, you know, the reputation of the library, um, as well as uh, continue to operate with our new tech. And the only other thing I'd point out is we have not transferred money to the special reserve for five whole years. That's why there is as much of it here as there has been. Wasn't there a suggestion by the audit firm to put a certain amount, like you said, in there? They suggested having a fund balance policy, and when I talked to them about the fund balance policy, they talked about the general uh, construct. In October? Yes, uh, at the October 16th. Okay. <coughs> Sure. All right, let's go around the table. Uh, Sue, we can start with you. You got any thoughts on this question? Um, I currently work at a library that five when I got there five years ago, they had not put funds on a regular basis into the special reserve, um, into the capital reserve, and they uh, had not ever increased the levy, and and they not did not increase budget. Um, they found themselves in a situation with a failing HVAC system, uh, a failing um, roof, um, you know, that could very easily uh, leak into uh, the entire library in, with all the materials, and um, we found ourselves with about eight million dollars worth of upgrade and repairs that were necessary, and it forced us to have to go to the public for a referendum to do a tax increase in order to uh, build a new facility. And <clears throat> I was always so proud of the fact that when I had worked at the Niles Library that we had always practiced the type of financial responsibility of not being in debt, but being able to be like anyone would love to be in a situation to save up for opportunities when you needed to upgrade um, with the way that libraries are being are serving the public these days, um, the types of facilities that are necessary. Um, you know, will be changing into the 21st century, and in order to keep pace with the needs of the community, um, we'll need to have that those funds available in the future um, when future boards, whether you know, this one or other future boards, have to make decisions about where we want to be in you know five, six, ten years. So I think it's a, a sensible plan. Yeah. Um. Well, in response to um, Susan Lemke's comments about our budget, um, as you all know, and I bring this up every year, we do not have a budget review process to plan our upcoming budget. Um, we do not review expenses. Greg has told us numerous times that he receives wants and aspirations from the staff. What we do is those items are added to our current budget, and voila, we have a budget. So if we don't review our spending, we can't determine how we're actually spending our money, what we're wasting, what we need, or what we don't need. So we may not be in debt, but we certainly don't follow any procedures to review our spending, to analyze a better way to do anything. We just spend. So um, I, I don't see how our budget process, which actually reflects our capital projects request. It's a list of items that we received from different parts of the library. The items, the amounts again are estimates. Greg was unable to give us definite amounts, but yet we have 
almost $6 million in capital requests, and we're going to tie lock in money on items that this board has yet to review and determine what the need is and what the cost is and make a decision. And those items could be placed in the cap into the capital projects and then money was supposed to be transferred into the um, reserves as we needed it. No need to take $5.2 million and lock it in the reserves well, we don't even know specifically what we're spending it on. That is what is is what the public sees as hiding tax dollars. So I strongly recommend that we review our capital projects before we claim we need five point two million to pay for them. Great. Linda. Actually, I don't look at it as hiding tax dollars. I look at it as being financially responsible for saving throughout the years and putting it into a special reserve where it can only be used for the building for items and not quote unquote cookie trays, if you want to say that. Um, but it actually for our infrastructure, because uh, just like Sue, um, I'm from District 207 and we currently can go for a referendum a large one that is costing taxpayers a lot of money because the infrastructure and there was no money saved for the renovations. I don't want that to be an extra additional hit. We've already saved the money. I want to make sure that money is there for our future of our community, for our homes to be um, appreciating based on the services and for the future of our library. So um, I'm actually for not keeping it in the general fund for any use, but for actually making sure that we have a solid future. Thank you. Um, honestly, as a board, we have been following recommendations by many different people. The audit recommended um, creating a document. We did that. Our policy to hit, hit, a, hit a six month target and double our, uh, our uh, funds. We're following that process. We received documents from uh, the um, management exactly what kind of capital projects will be coming up. I mean, we've done all the things that you say we haven't done or that they haven't done. And you're always, and Caroline, I'm speaking specifically. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't understand that statement. Could you clarify? Well, I think that you're always mentioning um, management not giving you the information. I believe that they do give us the information. Oh, no, no. I yeah. specifically made a statement. You must have misunderstood it. Well, um, it's my turn to talk. Okay. So you'll have to wait until your turn comes around. But I, I believe that we have received enough information to uh, approve this policy. Ed? We hired the people to go over our budget. It was their recommendation that we set the policy, which we did in October. This is basically us voting to do what we said we would do in October. Yeah. Um, I'm in favor of transferring some money into the Special Reserve, but not necessarily 5.2 million. Uh, and that is because I can see down the road that we definitely are going to have some capital expenses. And uh, the roof is uh, a large one, and I'm sure there'll be others. And that we will need to spend money on uh, capital improvements in the not too distant future. Um, I, I just to give some uh, applause to transferring that much, because once it's in the Special Reserve, our hands are tied. Mm -hmm. We can't really use it for anything else. I don't know what other uh, expenses we might have come up. I just don't know. So for that reason, I'm a little reluctant to transfer that much money into the Special Reserve at this time. 
Um, I, I do believe that it, it is wise to save up money for future renovations. I know that the last renovation that was done here was done uh, because we saved money ahead of time. We didn't have to borrow money. We didn't have to go out for a referendum. And, and I think that's the way government bodies should operate. They should save up money to buy something just like individuals should, if possible, save up money to buy things that they need in the future. Um, I know recently uh, District 63 was able to make some renovations without issuing bonds and without uh, going out for a referendum because they too had saved up money. So I think it's appropriate to do that. I do think it's appropriate. I perhaps am just thinking about moving a little bit slower than maybe some of the other uh, board members would care to do so. so. I'm waiting until you're done. Okay. I'm just letting you know I did get one question. Okay. Um, as far as the policy, the policy that was recommended that we did approve is that we would have at least six, at least six months of expenditures based on our budget, which is three million. Uh, the recommendation did not say that we should not have more than that in our general fund. It said we should have at least that amount, and we do have at least that amount. So again, I think we absolutely should transfer uh, some amount, perhaps two or three million, into the special reserve. I'm not sure if we need to transfer 5.2 million into the special reserve at this time. So that's where I stand on this. That's what I was going to ask you. What, okay. you, what is your suggestion? Because I'm flexible with that. Okay. And, and I'm, uh, you know, certainly listening to what the other board members have to say too. Uh, two or three million. Uh, that's not precise. I realize. Okay. All right. <clears throat> and I uh, actually agree with uh, Karen on this. Uh, I think three million would be a more um, prudent uh, uh, transfer at this time. And as far as not having uh, quotes or, 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 you know, people coming in and tell, telling us exactly what something's going to cost, I think that's uh, unreasonable. Uh, these are long-term savings, uh, savings for things that are going to happen far down the road, we, 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 nobody has the ability to, to give an exact amount on that, um, that cost. Uh, if, if I'm putting money away for a car that I want to buy in 10 years, I, you know, I, I, I'm just you know, planning for it. And this is, this is our savings for these expenditures. I do not want to, one, one um, resident suggested at the time that we need to I get money for this that we should, you know, do um, bonds, uh, and, and, I, and I don't want to do that. That's, that's putting us in debt. I don't believe that we should do that. I think if governments in general, across the board, didn't go into debt and you know saved and, and spent, we'd have a whole lot different situation going on. Uh, but we only have control over this government. Uh, so I am in favor of putting the money away. Uh, in order to save for these expenses that are going to come down the road, that we know they're going to come down the road, right? I mean, eventually they're going to happen. Um, and I would be in favor of changing the motion to a uh, $3 million amount at this time in order to do that. So you have to have a second for that? Uh, well, let's discuss if we are in agreement about that amount first before we even. Can I? Uh, I, yeah, go ahead. No, uh, go ahead. I wanted to respond. Um, I just want to clarify my comments about the budget and my uh, about the budget process that we do not have. We don't have a budget review process. We all know that. We've all been oh, well, here. Okay, we don't get to be putting that words we in our words. We, we do not opinion. have a budget your process. Your it's my turn to talk. We yeah, I understand, but do not say what we all know. Right. No, she already said that I am accusing management. My point is, sure. we do not have a review process of any spending to prepare for a budget. What we do is, You've said that we have never seen any analysis of any spending for any department yes. or anything. So that's what I'm talking about. If any of you have seen that, I have not I been you, given you have, it. You have told us this. Secondly, yes, you know this. we were given a special reserve fund of capital projects just for 2019-20. Um, it's showing $2 million. And these are old. This is from a few months ago. So I have no idea what's been added. But just $2 million worth of capital projects 
that our estimates is much too much money to lock in anywhere. Why can we not? take the time to determine exactly what we need and exactly what it costs. That's why we get estimates. Why is it we just sit here and throw numbers together and this board just agrees? Take three million, put it here. Take two million, well, Carolyn, put it there. All right, well, you're asking that question. Uh, in my opinion, <coughs> again, this is a long-term savings for things that we know will happen at some point. Why are you questioning it? You don't, do we not understand no, long-term savings? No, 19 and 20 is what I'm no. talking about this year. Well, let's not talk, we're not talking about that. We're talking about this proposal to put uh, money away, additional money away in our, our special reserve. So that's not on the table to talk, be talking about the, yeah, um, the document in your hand. No, these are these are our cap. This is our capital plan, which is what comes out of special reserves. Absolutely. So this we're two million dollars. We're talking about additional money outside of what's already in there, Carolyn. I, why don't you understand that? I understand it. I don't understand why we just take a uh, an amount of money for something that's going to happen in the future. Why don't we wait till the future? At least get past <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 1920 well, with some definite okay. explanations right. for spending two million. I think a number of people have said why we think that we should plan for the future, not wait. Well, can we future. plan for this year for two million? Well, can we, we already take the Karen. time to reevaluate this and understand if we need it well, and what it will actually cost? This is outside of that, Carolyn. I no, this is two of three million dollars. So this is what? pretty large. No, that's okay. This is two million dollars. You want to transfer three million? An additional three million. Okay. So, so before what's that? we so it has transfer, nothing to do with that. Before we tran you want to you want to transfer an additional three million dollars, and again, it's not specifically earmarked. Of course, that's you the can't idea. just transfer money and lock it in yes, we where can. it can't be accessible. <laughs> it's our authority to do so. Yes, we can. But what do you think we can't just? We, we, we did it five years ago. We're going to do it again. Or we're talking about doing it again. You know, our purpose as trustees is to do what's best for the community. Absolutely. And I think it would be in their best interest for us to identify costs before we determine them. That's your opinion. My opinion, it's in their best interest to plan for the future. That's my opinion. You had your opinion, I've got mine. We all went around and we had our opinions. You can look through all the papers you want as I'm talking, but that's oh, my no, I'm opinion. I'm just putting them away, I believe we're finished. Great. All right, so we have uh, an additional proposal to change the amount on this motion uh, from the five million plus dollars to three million, three million dollars. Can I have a discussion on that? Yes. Um, my only concern is that that is what it, okay, we already have a million in. That would just keep us a little bit above with the possible expenditures that are laid out. I understand it's estimate. I got that. Then that, that doesn't really, really leave anything for future development of the library for the infrastructure, not infrastructure for a renovation. And that concerns me. Um, I think even if it's, if we have to put some, in my opinion, I believe we need to put more in just so that we can secure that amount of money to not take out loans and to, that is a true responsibility of the board. But that is that in my opinion. So the question on the table right I now like is, keep it the way it is. You, you would rather the five off one, two, three. That's my opinion. Okay. Diane. Um, I think that I would rather see it added with more money because we know we're going to spend the two million quickly. I would like to see a little bit extra money in there for future. So that's what I mean. We we're cannot spend it if it's not in the special reserve budget. Unless we spend our capital expenditures. Right. Yeah. Right. So. We are talking about putting an additional amount in. The question is, do we put the 5.2 or do we put 3 million additional? That's the question on the table right now. Um, I, I think 3 million is fine. I prefer to just put the 5 million in if we have That's fine. That's what we're asking. Okay. If 
majority votes for the three million, then okay. Because we're still putting stuff in there to as a, a cushion. Um, I, again, I think three million for now. I'm not opposed to talking about this more and maybe transferring more later on. Um, I'd like some discussion, at, not right now, but in future meetings. We get sort of our history of renovations in the past, uh, how much we've spent, what we've done. You know, get a little bit more of a thinking process going in terms of when we would have to do that and how much how much that might cost. Because I, I do uh, want to do that with savings when the time comes. I would just like us to get maybe a little bit better estimate to the extent we can of when we would have to do that, how much it would cost, what kind of savings we'd have to uh, move forward for, move forward with. And, and again, I, I just had some concern about moving it into a fund where it's sort of locked in for a limited number of purposes, and, and that's my only other concern. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. And I, uh, six months, I, I, I'd rather us have a, a little bit more in our um, general fund than six months operating. Yes, I agree with that because taxes don't always come on time. Yes, you know, you never know what what might happen. So that's why I'm leaning more to the three million as well. Sue, do you have a uh, thought on this? You know, I, I'm not a big fan of having a big chunk of money in, in you know, that's not, you know, uh, with an intention for something particular, like saving for a future renovation. I work a non-for-profit, and it's not like the sort of big chunk of cash sitting there. I mean, if you have some possible example of why we would need those funds for something else, I'd be interested in hearing what else we would want to have that large amount of money sitting in the bank that's not put into the special reserves for? What would we need it for? Well, there's never a guarantee, an absolute guarantee that we would get our our, our operating um, funds from our real estate from the state. I mean, it happens. It's not happened. It hasn't happened that it had. It, that it's been withheld by life sometimes changes right. and I am a little bit more comfortable having um, I know in the past we've talked about having a whole year in reserve <clears throat> but this would give us more like um, you know three quarters of a year or something of that nature that's why I'm leaning more towards that I, I, it's it's a compromise between uh, enough in our operating uh, expenditure um, area and enough in our savings for future um, you're, you're talking general fund. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I was just going to give a couple of examples. You know, if our tax goods are delayed by the county clerk, maybe we don't get them on time, maybe they're months late, God forbid. Uh, if we have a huge uh, settlement uh, with, through mm. property tax appeal board and we have to refund taxes, okay. uh, there may be some other thing we want to spend money on, like when we paid off our IMRF bill. Uh, and we were able to save a lot of money by paying that right away because we didn't have these, those funds in our account. Uh, again, uh, please don't get me wrong, I do think saving up for a future possible uh, renovation is appropriate. I, I just think about doing it in a slightly different way. And Carolyn, I, I understand you're against um, putting it away altogether, but do you have an opinion on the 5.2 or the 3? No, I'm not against putting it away altogether. I mean, I agree with Karen. She'd like a better estimate about your plans for renovation so she can understand earmarking dollars. I'm just saying we do the same thing for capital projects and then determine what to put in there. I, I'm not at all for just taking a blanket amount of money and locking it in. And we don't have a specific, we haven't specifically decided what it's being used for. Okay, do you have an opinion on the 5.2 or the 3? If neither of them are going to be justified, then it's the same. No, neither. That's, that's fine. All right. Um, I sounds like we're clear on the three million. Am I right on that? I know we got a definite here. Do you need a motion? Oh, I know we do. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, we will amend the original motion. Uh, now it is a motion to approve the transfer of $3 million uh, dollars, um, and no cents from the general fund to the special reserve fund. Uh, I make the motion. 
Uh, can I have a second on that? Karen does. All right. Um, Cindy, would you take the role in this? Okay. Uh, okay. And Karen seconded it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Before we start, can I just ask another question? Sure. Okay, so um, if we change it to the three million, like you just said, mm -hmm. so then we're going to discuss it again in six months. Is that our. Is we that can our, discuss it at another time? period. We haven't specified a time. Discuss it in another if, year. We if we know. discuss it again, um, can we have some of this information that Karen was asking about? That's like stuff from previous renovations. Give us an idea of what kind of expenditures we have looking for. Because I don't feel comfortable voting um, unless we have a date that we talk about. That there needs to be a, a time that we actually agree it upon isn't. and revisit. Mm -hmm. And is there any limitations? Can if you transfer at any time? There's not a window that needs to be. No. Yes, so the motion is now overstated. It's in a motion to approve the transfer of three million uh, dollars and no cents from the general fund to the special reserve fund um, with the understanding that we will revisit this topic in six months. Do you need a second for this? I do, please. Oh, I need a second. Karen, a second. Karen. Okay. So, Cindy, now take the ball. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? No. Diane? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Sue? Yes. <clears throat> All right, uh, I believe Susan has a presentation for us on eliminating library fines. After we hear from her, we will decide if we want more information or if we are ready to make a motion and vote on it tonight. Thank you all for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. So um, I think we have talked very briefly in the past about going fine free. I know that several of the trustees attended a presentation on it at the Illinois Library Association conference where they ran through the seven myths about going fine free. Um, I don't want to replicate that presentation, but I wanted to give you a little bit of an overview. So um, here is what I was able to find out. I have had some help with it, on this with from Cindy and from Athena, our head of patron services. They both have been studying it. Why is it going? Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, so, um, so the reasons that you would have library fines, some of the reasons that you do have library fines is that it does make up a small portion of the budget. I think you can see from this that of this last year's budget, it makes up a third of 1%, basically, 0 0.35 of the library's budget. So it, it, it does provide some money to the budget. It is a very small amount of money. And it can be an incentive for people to return materials on time. Nobody wants to pay fines. Fines are punitive and unpleasant. Nobody wants to do that. So it's an incentive to people to get their materials back on time. So those are the good things about fines. Uh, here are the, some of the things that are problems about fines, is that a uh, fine on a library card can be a barrier to using the library. Um, and it's particularly a barrier for children who typically don't have the money to pay their fines. It's in the control of the parents. And it is a problem for lower income households that just may not, they may be needing to get food on the table or pay other bills and just not have money to pay for something that they don't see, you know, that they just can't. It's not as essential as some of those other things. Uh, another bad thing about library fines is that uh, the staff has constant negative interactions with patrons. They try to be as polite and lovely as possible. They sometimes waive fines when they can, but it's just not a pleasant conversation to be having. 
and it's something that they have to deal with every day. Um, and then it also then builds up negative memories of the library, like negative associations of the library in people. And the example of that I can give you is I met with um, the superintendent of District 71 across the street, came over for a visit, and he was, um, he was visibly uneasy being in the library. He, lo he loves reading, loves, it's a huge supporter of reading and the idea of the library, but he so remembered being yelled at at the library for having library fines that he just was kind of, you know, that was funny that somebody that is that pro-reading was very uncomfortable being in a library setting. I think there are many people like that that have bad memories of being at the library for that reason. Uh, it is one of the reasons that you end up with lines backing up at patron services when people have to be paying their fines. It's one more thing to deal with. And it is a reason, you know, I said it was a reason that materials are returned because people don't want to accrue fines, but it also is a reason why materials aren't, aren't returned. If they can't pay the fine, they sometimes just don't bother to bring the materials back. So in CCS, our computer consortium, there are now nine libraries that have gone fine free. Most of them in the last year, but a few of them even before that. Um, at when we did a poll at the last governing board meeting, we found that virtually everyone was looking at going fine free to the point where the question was even raised, would the consortium as a whole become fine free? I think people in general did not like that idea. We like the individual boards to be able to make decisions about things and particularly things about revenue. But all of these libraries are now fine free. And then the, uh, I put it out on the directors, a director's listserv and found that Lincolnwood, Northbrook, Palatine, Rolling Meadows, Skokie, and Waukegan are all going to their boards in January and February to recommend becoming fine free. And it looked like by, the, uh, by 2021, almost everybody in CCS was going to be fine free. And you're probably familiar with uh, you know, the Chicago Public Library recently going fine free and getting a tremendous influx of pair of people coming back in and their circulation is way up. And uh, as we saw at the presentation, the libraries that have gone fine free are very, very positive about it. Even the ones that had been cautious about it to begin with. Skokie right now is uh, fine free on children's <coughs> items, but he's going back to the board to have become completely fine free. <coughs> So then the question that, that people sometimes worry about is if people are going to have fines, have, what is their incentive to bring the materials back? And, yeah. and so uh, what they find in practice is that when people's cards get blocked, when they stop being able to use their library card, they bring the stuff back just as much as they did when, it was for, when they were getting charged fines. It seems to be just equal. And, and counsel, the, the value of the book or whatever it was, the accounts are done. So whatever, right. whatever yes, the Yes, right, exactly. exactly. Okay, right. So, yeah. Go ahead, I'm sorry, you're not Yeah, right. no, that's fine. It, okay. it's, yeah, it, what it means being billed is that they would be being charged basically the card, the, the cost of the book of 45 days. And um, we could, and then we do send accounts to collection, which, you know, obviously nobody likes being sent to collection. So, and then bear in mind that this is after you run through your automatic renewals and, sure. you know, it, it can be kind of an extended period. But if you have a hot pick item, and you haven't returned it in time, that fine will be on, that uh, block will be on fairly quickly. There is some wiggle room on that. You can adjust this a little bit. You can adjust it to, is it blocked after one book is overdue, or do you set it so that it's four books, or a total of this many dollars? So you, you can adjust it a little bit. Can it be adjusted for different types, as in the hat picks? I believe so, yeah. And then, or the other ones, yeah, okay, so I think so. You can get down to the yeah. Yeah. And then so uh, I wanted to look in particular at children with cards because I think that we all think that serving children is really a central function of a library, that they are the ones that are trying to learn to read and, and literacy is an essential skill in society. So we have a total of 24,000 card holders. Of those, 25% are 17 or younger. And of that, 25%, 36% of those have a balance on their cards. They, they are not able to use their cards because they have too much money on them. And then 60% um, of the cards with balances are actually expired cards, which means somebody got a fine on their card and they just never got a new library card when it expired. They just stopped using the library. So, and I think that's a sad card. Oh, they may have moved. But no, that's always, a, that, that's some of them, definitely. 
Uh, and then I just thought for perspective that, um, that you might not realize how many of the people that live in our community are lower income. And so I got, uh, Cindy pulled some information from the different schools of what their percentage of low income families are. And you can see that, you know, 59% at Apollo and Mark Twain School, that is, that is a lot of, of families. Um, and it's, it's all kind of within that 50%, like have literally half of the families of kids going to those schools. I don't have any comparable data on some place like, you know, St. John Brebuff or any of the private schools, but these are our public schools in our district. I didn't pull the ones that are, have the students that are mostly in other districts, like Melzer School is mostly more to grow. But, yeah. but that's a lot. Yeah. We have that many, they're going to make Niles, oh yeah, Niles. Northwest is what Culver fits I mean, into. That's a, a big, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's, I was surprised by the differences in the main east, the main high schools, because mm -hmm. main south was like 6%. So it's really Yeah, main west, west is high. That's yeah. a very big difference. Huge. So, I, you know, if we say that we're here to do something, to do these things, if we're vital to the community, I think it's important that as many people as possible be able to use the library and find our, one of the ways that people stop using the library that's in their way. So. Um, I'm happy to try to get any additional information for you, but, uh, but you would ask for more information on this, and um, this gives you kind of an overview, and you know, those of you who attended the ILA session can maybe speak a little bit more about what you heard there, um, about the experiences of the other libraries and the trustees that go to those, and you know whether it overall has been a positive thing. Um, but again, I, it's just a very small portion of the budget, that, so it's not yeah, it's a like significant amount of money. Particularly when we went to auto renewals, yeah. it would drop drastically. You want to go? Yeah, um, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. All right. So I was one of the people that went to that seminar on uh, fines, and initially I was against uh, eliminating fines, but after listening to all those uh, people talk, I thought, no, no, maybe it's not such a bad idea. Uh, particularly since we do still have sort of, we have, we have some way of getting people to return books, that is they can't pick out any other articles until they bring back the one that is overdue. Um, I actually think there's another reason to eliminate fines in addition to the one that they've been mentioned by, by Susan, and that is probably the fines that we uh, have established, I'm guessing were established 50 years ago and haven't been raised for decades. And they're now so low, in my opinion, I'm looking at it a different way, it, it's not worth collecting them. And, and I have to uh, admit with some embarrassment, I did have a book overdue recently, and I had to come in, and I had a standard line, and I had to bother some person working at the desk to pay 75 cents. I was waiting there, she had to wait on me, she then had to, you know, I forgot my card, so then she had to look me up, then she had to take the time to try and find change, all this for 75 cents. Yeah. It was really a waste of time. It was a waste of time. And I just don't think that the time spent on trying to collect these minuscule fees are really worth it. And I think it's a better idea just to say, you can't take another book out until you've returned all the ones that you've borrowed. What, what I got from that talk we went to was yes. But they did tighten up other things mm -hmm. to keep people, you know, give them a slap without a financial slap. Such as, okay, it's not just at our library, look at the amount of classes. If you can't, if your library book has got a freeze on it, you could freeze them from going to a class. That would probably affect a lot of people negatively where they say, okay, here's my book. There's, there are a lot of different rules we can put in place to slap these people without slapping them financially, that this might work to our benefit. Even though right now... Maybe you could say give them an incentive, not slap. Okay, I give them an incentive. I like the term slap. <laughs> give them an incentive, whatever. Right. Same difference. Too bad. A little nicer, I guess. <laughs> but, you know, what can I say? Uh, but yeah, I think if we have enough incentives, because some of the libraries did say they definitely tightened up their incentives and found it was working very well for them. Instead of eliminating the fines? Oh, no, eliminating the fines, but also tightening up 
or mm -hmm. anger, having tougher incentives or more incentives? Well, and when you block a card, you, you know, a lot of people do streaming services in it, so they wouldn't be able to use Hoopla, they wouldn't be able to use... Ah, uh, uh, that would be a lot of people. Right. <laughs> And as soon as they bring the book back, they can resume oh, yeah. using yeah. all the services. That was my question. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, yeah, I too was at the same presentation, and everybody just was so excited about it. They never go back and charge fines again. I mean, it just saves time, uh, staff time, energy, as you said. Um, one uh, thing that I don't know where I heard this at this uh, presentation or not, but um, one incentive was to hold the in amnesty period. Yes. Mm -hmm. Say picking a month and saying mm -hmm. everybody bring your books back because mm -hmm. you won't be charged for a month or mm -hmm. a week or a day or pick a day and advertise it throughout the village. You know, so that's one thing. Um, I just think it's a good idea. At first, I didn't like it because I, I, I mean, just a little part of me that says you're not teaching them responsibility. I still have that little thought in the back of my mind, but really, really, I mean, it's not our job to teach responsibility. Ah. <laughs> no, I just. I mean, that's not sure. a, that's not what we're here for. Also, <laughs> in other ways. Yeah, they dropped the book in a puddle. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so my question would be, um, then on creating the policy, after the 45 days, then you would be charged your account. However, then your children's department or young adult pool, librarian would then have to reorder that book. Or... Yeah whatever it is. Right. So then we wouldn't have to repurchase that. Um, then what happens if someone comes in 60 days and returns the book? Well, that happens now. Okay. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's just part they of it. They get their money. Still yeah. Their yeah. They still get their money back even though we reordered the book? Depends. Well, we could set it up however we thought was appropriate. I mean, that, that would be my pay. question because then it's, it's kind of like then we're stuck with two copies. Maybe we don't need two copies. And then here we are in the library, kind of paying double for something that. But that happens now. But we do that. Happens. That happens all the time currently. Right, because I know, like our policy is, once we pay for a new book, we don't give that money back to the patron because yeah. we've already. A time once we paid for it, mm -hmm. for there's no going back. That's long. Yeah. So we refund within sixty days. Do we ninety? and then we lessen it because we found out people returned it sooner. Yeah. I mean, if for some reason it's a book that maybe we wouldn't have bought again because it wasn't hot, then it's, if we didn't buy it, then okay, yeah. But if we did buy it because it's hot, you know, and other people are on hold and it's not fair really to the community, put it that way, that we don't have one on hand, then once we purchase it to get other person, I don't know. I, I it's say it's kind of like, a, a there's a, you know what I mean? There's just yeah. a, I just don't want to see us keep on buying things because yeah. people, are, and then also we have five copies of the book really that mm -hmm. we only need one. And in, in all honesty, it, is we aren't that speedy. Speedy. We just aren't. We just we <laughs> aren't, we aren't <laughs> that quick at reordering. I guess maybe we are, are in high back. school a little bit more yeah. just because of things are, you know, it's all one yeah. one age group. You know, it's like, no, um, it's 300,000 some cooking cooking materials yeah. here. We just yeah. are not that quick. I know, because we haven't had fines now for about five years. So we had to come up with a strict policy because of it. So I'm just wondering. I and you know what? It can always be changed based mm -hmm. on what mm -hmm. you're experiencing. Mm -hmm. I guess I just would want that type of revisiting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you we do decide to put that policy, I would like maybe every so many months to just revisit, talk to the departments, see how it's affecting their collection. Okay. I would just think that would just be a, okay. a positive sure. thing. How long do you think? Six months like we did for the other thing? 
Well, no, they would have to come up with that in themselves. They would have to, each, like, the director would have to be talking or, you know, talking with the <coughs> department and, <coughs> and just saying, how's it going? You know, that would just have to be something on your department agendas yeah. or mm -hmm. admin agenda. Yeah. So we're, we're just generally discussing now the, yeah, just the overall idea. plan, but yeah. not the specifics. Right, and, but I just like kind of... But, let me, let me ask you this so many over. different libraries that we can use as resources right. and, mm -hmm. and, and have that exact same question exactly. and say, you know, how do you handle this? How do you handle yeah. it? And then, you yeah, know, you've been doing I mean, this for years. We're, this is, we're not first adopters here. Yeah, you know, there's it's definitely exactly uh, the same a lot thing. of people yeah. have done this before. So, so. so if we decided on it, would then you would come back to yeah. us with the, 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 the policy, the list of. Um, um, yeah, it would come back with Right. So, so it's right. Right. My, my question is today we're voting. On anything with this? We haven't made a motion yet. We're okay. deciding if we want to make a motion for this. Okay. Sure. Um, well, I understand all this complexity of trying to collect fines. I totally understand that. But I have a problem with saying the Niles Main Library decided to eliminate fines, like as if, oh, wow, now we could do whatever we want. If we could come up with, like, a restructuring process or some terminology where we still find patrons accountable like so the kids are probably the largest group and, and they're up to 17 though responsibility who lose their books but what I'm saying is I I understand that it's not worth collecting 75 cents but by the same token um how are we going to get our materials back? Like, what are we going to implement that if you don't have to pay money, that you will do this? Well, they still can, they still will go to collection if they sit on their materials and don't bring them back. So that's not a fine. That's not fines are like you're late. Like when you lose a book, that's not a fine. That's something that's, else. Right. That's a different line of okay, budget. So that yeah. doesn't disappear. That's okay. that. They still have to pay for that stuff. Mm -hmm. they and, and and I'm not sure how you want to go about this, but you know, for lower income kids, we never had them have to pay money for anything. We always came up with something they could do, or you know, bring in a can of food or whatever. But I, and and I'm not saying we need to go through all that complication. I'm just saying I don't want to just say, oh, we threw out our fines. I want to say we've restructured mm -hmm. the process for not returning books. I think amnesty is a great idea. We should mm -hmm. do that irregardless of fines or not. But um, I don't know. I want to come up with, I'd like us, instead of just voting, to come up with what I actually this will entail and then vote. I think that's the plan. We're yes. discussing it right now. Okay. And I think that most of the libraries present themselves as they're currently fine free. That doesn't mean that's responsibility free. It means fine free. That you know, like me tonight. You know, I had my books. They were due on Sunday, and I I put you know I named they're no over you know a couple days, and I was like, well, I'm going to come to the library for the board meeting. So I want to run all the way over there, you know. And it's kind of like it, it's a convenience for people, and it encourages sure. use because I really yes. believe there is a psychological barrier amongst so many, and I've heard it so frequently where people are like, I never use the library because I remember getting beaten up by a librarian because my books were overdue or, yeah. you know, I had to pay my $5 fine and, and I'm embarrassed. I mean, there's a lot of embarrassment that yeah. people sure. feel. You know, sure. even yeah. if it is just $5. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's like I feel ashamed of myself that I know that I should have returned it and, you know, and I feel that that removes that barrier. We'll get a lot more people that will be coming. I think the statistics, if you could provide them, Susan, from some of these places, that would be helpful too to the public yes. when we finally do yeah, roll right, it out right. and say, out. here's the increase of materials that were returned mm -hmm. to us that have been sitting there for years, and here's the increase in people coming in that have been afraid to come in. And, and it's just really that is the mission of the library mm -hmm. not to collect 75 cents from somebody. Well, in response to your comment about like, some people are shamed by the librarian or the staff yeah. person. I'd like to see us whether you're paying a fine or not paying a fine, not you know rebuking these poor. Oh, people. I don't think that's the you know? current attitude. So I think it's it's some characters. other libraries. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's just a psychological scar from your childhood. Oh no, yeah, <laughs> it is a lot of that. And okay. seriously, if somebody is saying you owe something, 
It doesn't matter if they say, oh, you owe us. <laughs> you owe us. Yeah. It's still going to be negative. At least that's how I interpret it. All right. So I think uh, we're generally in favor of it. If you would bring uh, maybe more details of how the program would actually okay. work. Mm -hmm. I'm not that's done. Right. Oh, I, I know. That's why I'm just raising my hand. Oh, okay, good. Like, um, <clears throat> we, we had some details of how it would work. I, I love the comment or the suggestion of restructuring the process for, for returning books. That's so much more gentle. Okay. And um, it doesn't uh, lend towards the, ah, oh, they're just going to get away from fines. Um, we do. Generally, uh, I think every year I've been a trustee, our uh, expenditures have been consistently, they're, they're, they're always below our budget. So nobody's brought up uh, how we deal with the elimination of the $25,000 that we get from fines that we currently have in our budget. But we do, uh, we are under budget by far more than that amount every year. So I think we can absorb that $25,000 fairly readily in that. I um, think particularly with the increased revenue of passport mm -hmm. revenue, I think we, that we kind of does an offset right. to an extent. And doesn't that right. include lost books? Right. It's actually separated out. I have yes. a question yes. too, but it is separated. Right. So, um, okay, so I should come back with a plan, plan for how yes. to implement this. Correct. Mm -hmm. Is there something else you want to add? Yes, yeah, just regarding the plan. I just had a question and that might figure in the plan. Uh, we here at Niles renew books for up to, assuming there's no hope, uh, Niles renews books for four times, is that it? You can renew it four times or you, you get it for four times? I think it's really four, is that right? So I, our materials only, so if you interlibrary loan, like Forest book, you're only going to get two renewals. Because, I'm sorry, what? Sorry. Intro. So if you interlibrary loan a book from, mm -hmm. let's say, like Forest, they only allow two renewals. So okay. even though you're checking it out at Niles, you're only getting those two. Because okay. I can't say it's a straight four for everything. So okay. mm -hmm. our material, yes, you get four. So it's okay. five total. So okay. you get your initial checkout plus, plus the four minutes. Gotcha. So I just didn't know if that figured into calculating. I, I guess it doesn't really. If, if well, when we changed to that, it did cut our fine revenue in half, literally. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. it, it made, we, we had that impact a couple of years ago. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And is this, when other, if someone takes a book out from our life, from someone else's library, it doesn't reach, it takes it out through now and returns it late to Niles, and the other library still collects fines. I don't think they How do. How does that work? I think, the, I think that one of the issues that they're having is somebody that is, let's say somebody gets a book from Algonquin, which is fine free, but they return it here, they end up getting charged with fines here. And so that's part of why CCS is kind of hoping it will kind of, be, kind of become more universal, so that we can stop having money getting transferred back and forth and oh, being complicated. Wasn't well, there some discussion about this as far as fines in between libraries that they yeah. don't always go in yeah, between it's libraries so messy because it's, it's so messy? Dumb. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you okay. very much. Great. No. Yeah. It's a it's a great thing. <clears throat> okay, next up is uh, I'd like to take a few minutes to discuss the way we're asking the staff to prepare meeting minutes. Uh, in the past, we have talked about having minutes that are uh, summary minutes, but I think we've never really looked at an example of what pure summary minutes would be. And on page 43 through 46, uh, Susan and Diane have uh, provided this for us. So um, we can go around and talk about it, but but but. Okay. Right. And I have uh, some personal uh, suggestions for some the, the modifications of what was currently currently in here, but um, we can talk about this. <coughs> I think it would. Oh, so it does. It does provide summary. Um, uh, the the treasurer's report is removed from the, the minutes. You know, I, I I never saw the need for having your uh, entire report put into no. minutes because we're you're giving the report. You know, we don't need to have the. We just it, the the, the, the well, minutes are watch the minutes. right. Absolutely, the minutes are supposed to be what happened, not everything that was what said. 
So uh, I don't know if everybody's had an opportunity to look through this. Um, but um, what are your thoughts on this, Karen? I, I think. Uh, are you, are you yeah, I'm, we can go around that. Yeah. All right. I, I think the minutes uh, should be very summary and should list to the minimum uh, if a motion was made, who made it, who seconded it, if it was passed or not. And I think the roll call should be listed. Uh, beyond that, I don't think it's really required that the minutes say much more than that. And, and that is particularly true now when we have a video recording of every meeting. And every word that's said in a meeting can be viewed by every member of the public. It's on our website. People can listen to it in the comfort of our own home. So I think uh, having minutes that say anything uh, beyond the uh, minimum requirements of which motions were made and passed, it's really unnecessary. That's my opinion. Here, here, I agree with that okay. statement. I agree. Agree. Linda? Agree. Carolyn, what do you think? I have a question about um, electronic minutes versus the written minutes. Uh -huh. I believe we talked to Susan, <clears throat> was it a few months ago? I asked, I think this, according to written minutes that we um, have to maintain them for so long, like there's some, there's a law that, or statute that indicates that, but there is no time frame for electronic minutes. Correct. Right. So, I mean, they're not minutes, but the recording of them. Of it. So what what yeah. happens then? That would be up to board policy. So currently, what is the time limit for the written minutes? I think it's mm -hmm. virtual mm -hmm. records. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cindy's in charge of local records. So yeah, the written minutes are that is that is the library's historical record. So then we would. I think need to do the same thing with the video, correct? I mean, it would always have to be there. Is that a lot more to maintain? Or? It's on the YouTube. Well, actually, when I'm looking for board packets or minutes, I go to the library. But, but, but then the library library to YouTube. video is housed on YouTube. So it doesn't matter. So yeah, we can maintain stay it forever. forever. Endless. Okay. Well, it would be YouTube Unless YouTube goes out of business. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Nothing lasts forever. No, that's true. Okay, so we would eliminate minutes no. on paper. No, we would no. go with a, a, a <coughs> condensed version. Okay, I just have one recommendation about that. In this example where it lists um, somebody talk. Uh, um, let me see. Well, like for example, trust. Oh, um, okay, public comment. Detailed comments made by residents Mr. Doty and Ms. Doty Ashcraft are available on the video recording of the board meeting. I would like to know if you can put a link there so you can go specifically to just that comment as opposed to having to listen to the entire video to find out what they said. How would you find it? Is that possible that you can do that? What do we, we have that? now? We have um, some. We already have it. Yeah, I mean, we could just put the time of, you know, where to look on it, like one minute. Okay, or, or Susan, what do you have now, though? We, you, I can go on. Yeah, yeah well, can. online you can, but, but for somebody looking at a piece of paper, they need to be having some, like, a link to the information that we're specifically oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. So which I think that's a fair statement. I mean if we want yeah. people to know to be that to be available to people. So then um, you would just do that. Okay, that makes sense. Like you would document like the minute seconds location. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. I know but we have to do it for each each the last section on the, the minutes then. Well, I mean, I'd be just like reading it, it would be available to yeah. you. But the thing is is I mean when I go to other function meeting, I mean, when I want to look at theirs online, I know that that person spoke and I just go through it and I find that's it. Well, I think it's laborious. Oh, that's well, what, what I what, want what to do. You, I want to find it yeah. and that's my, <coughs> what I do. 
I mean, what if somebody wanted to specifically see what we talked about for the fans? Well, and maybe you see link something here. Maybe have to else link and hear something else that maybe you're interested in, too. I mean, it doesn't have to be that. Okay, but back to section. Okay. And it also I'm seems here. very time consuming. Yeah, I, I don't know how to put that front. To have to go yeah, through that for the, you know, a few exceptions. Sure. I think you know where it is on the agenda, and that's how you kind of figure it out. If okay. people can so find So, Susan, it. back to what we already have on the website, maybe the categories you have access to, and maybe that's what they can do. So that's that's even, that's fine. You, I, when you're I would talking understand categories, that. you're being like, on the, on the procedures for agenda, hearing. you go to, okay, here, it says public comments. And then you could look if it says public comments. That That's what I'm saying. That would suffice. Those are like the agenda topics. Yeah. Right. And then you would just look for who spoke instead of having to view the whole video. Yeah. So that would be watch fine. the main township ones. How, sure. how laborious would that be to set it up like that? Okay. So if you look at, uh, can we see it? Yeah. I guess we can. Yeah. Oh, so if you look on the screen, upper left-hand corner, oh, we got it. Sure. So you have call to order, roll call. This is last meeting. Pledge of Allegiance, you know, so if you want to go directly to the Pledge of Allegiance, there we go. Oh, that looks like a library. Well, when you click on the link on the library, it goes straight to YouTube. All right, gotcha. Okay. Who's that good looking guy way at the back? The guy in the shadows. The guy in the shadows. So if you want to go to public comment, there's public comment. Oh, that's awesome. Has it always been a list underneath it? Yeah, right down there. Right down here. So, you know, you go to the trust your reports. Who begin with President's report. Report again. So we're not worried about YouTube disappearing, right? If they do, we would know in advance. Right? <laughs> and then we'll worry about it. Yeah. It'll be like Facebook disappearing. Yeah. All right. So, okay, great. Uh, Sue, did you have something on that? All right. So, I, but I do have a number of specific things uh, on the very uh, front page. We have pre trustees present. I think we should have trustees absent. Uh, and then in our trustees present, just list who is present, and I don't, I don't need to know that somebody gave previous notice. That is, oh, no, just you are asked to put that on here. You are. Yeah, it's not just they didn't show up; it's that they okay. informed us that is they were not able to show up. All right. Well, let's let's separate out so trust, yeah, trustees yeah. action. All right. And then others present. I I believe we really should only list people who are at the table, um, as in the attorney. I mean, we can get into it. We've had meetings where we had 10, 20 people. I, I, I think I don't like the precedent of listing everybody who well, wants to. But we always do. I mean, that's not yeah, exactly yeah. what we do. Yeah. 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 But no, at the beginning of this, the others present, we've always recorded everybody whose name we know that's in this room. People sign in. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's why Diane Howes, you decide in this thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. These are just my suggestions. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, under public comment on the bottom there, uh, I don't think we need presidents, but only invited those who can sign in to speak, because that's evident they do. Yeah. And then everywhere it says are available on the video recording, and that's a number of places throughout it. I think we can get rid of those. Details can be found. Details can be found. You know, that's all over the place. Yeah. So, you know, it, it becomes pretty evident that it's details. So those are my suggestions for this document. I'm okay with it as we move forward. Okay. We'll Great. Very good. Um, all right. Uh, well, uh, I, you know what? I'd like to take up the other uh, before we go into executive session, if you all don't mind. Uh, Are we going into executive session? For, the yeah, for, for a little bit. Um, okay. and, and Dave is, is going, so I wanted to kind of uh, look at this while he's not here. <coughs> we had talked about uh, possibly doing something. <coughs> more standard for when um, somebody passes away, uh, a staff member uh, passes away. And I had um, kind of fumbled around for what we do, and I thought, well, maybe if we made a, a policy of it <clears throat> so that it's it's pretty uh, clear what should be done. And just and this is just my suggestion. I was thinking we could have a standard donating $100 uh, donation or flowers, depending on what the family wants, for when there's a spouse, partner, or a child. And, but we can expand that, those are my just categories. 
and then I thought we could have a card for a parent. Am I missing somebody? Is there any other relationship we should really be acknowledging? Brother, mother. Well, brother, sister. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah that. Sibling. Sibling would be a card then. If you're doing it for the parents, you would do that for siblings. Sibling. Yes. Uh, and then I thought it would be nice if, if, if Diane and Susan had you know, five or six of these just generic cards at the ready. Um, and then when somebody passes away, they could just. Uh, go ahead and make those donations or, or do those flowers without waiting for the board mm -hmm. to have to meet. Yeah, I'd love to have right. that standardized. You have to tell us what fund to take that. Right, I think it should come out of the trustees myself. We, we have quite a bit in there, don't we? Because we have, most people haven't been going to places or doing things. Yeah, we generally have yeah. Yeah. budgeted 5000 yeah. Right. I mean, ALA is going to have the summer here in Chicago, and I expect you will spend some well, time there. Yeah. Realistically, I think. Well, yeah. we can just, we get tired, and we can always change it, right? Mm -hmm. Right. 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 So, uh, so there's $5,000 in the trustee. Yes. Before we do that, I just, I don't know, I just, I'm going to ask you about taking it out of our fund. I think it's a little Think of it as book sale money. That was the other, yeah, I was thinking um, of that as well. Do we have book sale money? Yeah, I mean, are we, talk, are we discussing it or are we voting on it? No, we're discussing it first. Okay, all right, okay, since it's just a discussion, could you, um, may I ask you, Susan, if you could just ask other libraries what they do? I can. I, I think the practice, the practice is going to be very, very widely varied very because very just last week somebody asked who pays for your for your staff holiday party and the you know about a third were just comes out of the library budget a third was from the library friends and a third was like potluck or other so it's like different places just have different standards for these things yeah okay all right well i guess i i would be i would feel better if i knew other libraries yeah, least yeah. well i can certainly at least find that out you know just rather than just everybody just say a little collection okay you just don't i just still find them I understand. <laughs> so book sale money is not public money? It's, do it's donated materials it's donated. as well as library yeah. materials. Yeah. So, so it's not um, really so much. I mean, I put a lot of not materials really materials in there. Right. Public right. Right. Me, so. right. yeah. We donate our own books here. You know, so it's all donated. Uh, donated from public, public <laughs> money, right? Yeah, I guess <laughs> definitely. But it's keeping it all within the yeah. state. But I do like the idea of having us have direction of what Absolutely. we should be doing yeah. instead of yeah. having yeah. a scramble yes. for, okay, does anybody want to throw some money? Right, and have yes. it very specific so it's not yes. for one yes. or the yes. other. I, I, yeah, I don't like the idea. Set yeah. Policy. Correct. yeah, I like the idea of the consistency. And, and I looked up, I, I mean, I, I don't know what about we should say. I, I had a hundred, I looked up flowers for funerals mm -hmm. for Dave just to see what we could do with those. Generally between seventy five and hundred, they're pretty expensive. Yeah. 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 They're you know they're really high. Well, <coughs> they don't die. And I don't know schedule. how often. There's a lot of things yeah. you have to do. That's so. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, a lot of people say. I think she didn't want flowers, didn't she? No, they wanted, no, they wanted them. That's why I said flowers slash donation. Donation. So there's a lot of people. Right? You know, but you need to set them up. So, um, so we'd like Susan to come up with a little bit more. Okay, just, yes, just fine. Can, can we make a decision amongst ourselves to give for Dave's wife? Absolutely. All right. Can, we're okay with that. Oh, where were you? Donation. I already, donation. Said, oh, okay. I already sent them. What? I already. You already sent them. I have no donation. Yeah. Right, let's let's do a donation uh, for this for this bike. Okay. So you're saying you have given the money to go for the donation for Correct. Yes. Okay. All right, very good. Um, we we'd also talked about um, providing uh, treats for staff day. Mm -hmm. I believe the staff day is coming up. There, they, we've got that all covered. We've got it all covered. They've got their snacks, they've got their desserts. Yeah. Great. Great. All right. <laughs> they get plenty of benefits already. Great. All right. 
So uh, then I now need a motion to go into executive session to review and approve closed ses session minutes. So moved. So moved, Second. seconded, great. Uh, Cindy, please take the roll call. Just say aye. Yes. Aye. Can we just do aye? Aye. Aye. I already voted aye.